If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fees. If you're on Xbox and need some game to score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Well, it's been a very interesting week for me to see the least. And let's just say, uh, the less said about what's happened over the last couple of weeks, the better. Some of you may remember the uh, video that I put up on on, uh, on Monday. Somebody had the nerve to try and call me out for being a liar. They had the nerve to call me out for lying about what happened. And all I had to say to that was, if you're going to call me out for being a liar about what happened, then you're off the team. The only reason, the only reason they called me out, the only reason you called me out for being a liar is because you were trying to defend this person that broke up with me. They're the ones that broke up with me, not the other way around. I'll say this right now. I'm not exactly in a very good place right now. And at the end of the day, when all's said and done, Anything negative towards me, and I think it's over the mark. If you have the audacity to try and drag me down and make me feel worse than I already am, you're off the team. It's very simple. It's as simple as that. I wasn't feeling, no, physically I wasn't feeling 100% yesterday. So I couldn't get so I couldn't get this done yesterday. So I had to make do with doing it today. So I've got this, I've got the apprentice, and I've got Tom and Jerry Sins to do as well. So I'm in for a productive I'm in for a very busy day today. Anyway. Hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Retro here, back once again with another episode of the Trophy Achievement Podcast, your one-stop shop for all the latest gaming news, rumours, and of course, those points and trophies at the end of the show. We've got a lot to get through today, so um, we've got news primarily on uh, Red Dead Redemption, we've got news on Super Meat Boy. Um... We've got news on Pokemon Go, uh, Xbox, PlayStation, we, and a lot of it's primarily Red Dead Redemption because the game came out yesterday. So I'm going to be covering that. And uh, in the points and trophies section at the end of the show, I'm going to be going through the Achievements for Red Dead Redemption 2 and of course the new trophies that just got added to the Spider-Man to Spider-Man on PlayStation But before we get into all of that big shout out as always to Boomerang Rentals package itself which was 3 dollars a month Sign up today get a 21 day free trial and you get three free game rentals as well There are no late fees you can keep the game as long as you like or keep it forever at a discounted price on the online store once you start renting, you're going to start saving. And boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. Oh, it's been a long time since we heard one of these. It has been a long time since we've done one of these. It's our gaming, it's our gaming screw up of the week. And it is regarding uh, one of our, one of the developers of from uh, Battlefield 5. So here we go, this is what it is. Um, the original story reads, 
Royally by hand, the big hand, core gameplay designer of Battlefield 5 has taken to Twitter to air his grievances about getting unfairly banned from Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Lebihan believes the ban has something to do with his excellent performance in, mul in multiplayer in an effort to prove his innocence. Lebihan posted a video showing off some of his best skills. So I got banned from back Black Ops 4, lol. Could you please not? He revealed in a tweet tagging the official accounts for Treyarch and Treyarch PC. Please find attached to this great video of me killing some players in Black Ops 4. Except this is a token of my appreciation towards your game. In brackets, please unban. This is indeed the official verified account of gameplay designer Florian Lebihan. Battlefield fans will recognise it from the many Battlefield questions they answered in the past from a takeover of the official DICE Twitter account last month. We have no way of verifying what the reason for the ban was and the screenshot Lebihan shared doesn't list a reason it doesn't list a reason it could simply be an error or perhaps a false positive flag for the game's automated anti-cheat system. Lebihan is a former pro player and you can see a few of his earlier videos on the, his YouTube channel so that could be why his skill was mistaken for a cheat. The update here is The update here is that uh, he can now resume the slaughter according to the article. After Lebihan's story went viral, the designer later revealed that Treyarch had lifted his Call of Duty Black Ops 4 ban. He jokingly wrote, I'll try to keep it cool for a bit now. Promise. Though Lebihan still doesn't know the reason behind the ban, he is pretty confident that it was, it was not as a result of any application he was running in the background while playing. That said, he has a few ideas as to what could have caused this. My best guess is more based on stats and patterns like HS ratio, kills per minute, headshot sequences, and drastic performance trends changes all the time. Combine multiple suspicious factors and a few alarms ring until the ban. Now, this is one of these fine examples of the system not exactly being very fair. And it's a case of, yeah, you get banned for being so good at the game. I mean, he said himself he used to be a pro gamer. People have the nerve to try and call him out for being a cheat. articles on Pokemon Go. The first one is regarding the Halloween event and greatest legendary raid. So here we go. Following the latest leak, Niantic confirmed Pokemon Go's annual Halloween event is coming back for another year. The event is now underway for a limited time and introduces a handful of new Gen 4 Pokemon to the game as well as the first Gen 4 legendary. As in previous years, Niantic de is debuting a couple of new Ghosts and Dark type Pokemon during Halloween event. For this time around, players will have their first chance to catch Drifloon, Stunky, and the Revolve forms Drifblim and Skuntank. The studio is also offering new trainer hats, shirts, and backpacks inspired by Ghost Pokemon through the in-game store, including a Gengar, Gengar backpack and Drifloon, Drifloon cap. On top of that, Niantic is kicking off a new special quest line, whereas previous special research quests led to encounters with mythical Pokemon Mew and Celebi. This new one revolves around Spiritomb, another ghost Pokemon introduced in Gen 4. Niantic is also rolling out new field research tasks that focus on ghost and dark Pokemon. Finally, just as in past few years, players will earn double the amount of candy for capturing Pokemon during the Halloween event. Perhaps most notably, the first Gen 4 Legendary is set to debut in Pokemon Go. 
coincided with the start of the Halloween event, Pokemon Platinum's cover monster Giratina will appear around the world as a raid battle at Gibbs until November 20th, giving players roughly a month to add one to their collection. Giratina is a dual ghost dragon type, so you'll need to bring along a powerful dark or dragon type to challenge it. So you've got your dark types like your Tyranitars, your uh, Might Hyenas, uh, Houndooms, uh, what other ones do we have? Um, uh, Gyarados with dark attacks. Um, you've got your dragons, you've got your dragonites, uh, your quasas, and all that. Pokemon Go's Halloween event is slated. Pokemon's Halloween event is slated to run until November first. Meanwhile, the next game's next community day is scheduled to take place on Saturday, November tenth. Although Niantic has hasn't announced any further details as of yet. Now, I just I just managed to get my third Giratina earlier today, so. I'm pretty happy with that. Next, a major new feature is on its way to Pokemon Go Adventure Sync. Adventure Sync will. Adventure Sync is. Oh, I say so. Oh, I can't read that. A new major, a major new feature is on its way to Pokemon Go. Adventure Sync will. Uh, Long lost allow players to continue tracking their walking distance without having their game active or good Pokemon Go Plus tracker. This is a huge relief for anyone investing in ha invested in hatching eggs and collecting Pokemon Buddy candy, both of which require logging a lot of steps. If you have a huge array of 10 kilometer eggs you're trying to hatch, for example, you now you can do it much more easily. The game, the game can be idle or outright closed to do so. The upbeat should make a helpful impact on our phone batteries and data plans. Adventure Sync uses the iOS Health Kit and Android Google Fit apps, and it will offer additional data to players about their exercise levels each week. The feature will provide this, a summary of how players have, have how far players have walked over the course of the week, broken down into calories and steps. That information is then sent over to Pokemon Go so that players' physical activity can have a direct effect on the mobile game. They'll also unlock rewards based on how much they've moved throughout the seven day period. Niantic CEO John Hank wrote in a blog post that Adventure Sync won't be exclusive to Pokemon Go. It's a real world platform that the company plans to interrogate, integrate into its other projects as well. 47% of trainers indicated that they felt their physical activity level had increased since playing, and the same number felt that Pokemon Go helps them connect with others, he wrote. This type of response from the community reinforces our commitment to not only create innovative real-world games, but also to invest in features like Adventure Sync, which provides a gentle but effective motivation loop that encourages people to get outside and be active every day. Adventure Sync is, expect is expected to launch sometime in 2019, according to Hank. Please don't stop walking around with Pokemon Go as you wait for the feature though. Keep that physical activity up. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Right, we've got PS4 exclusive Days Gone delayed again. Goodness me, here we go. Here we go. Sony has provided updates for some of the titles in development as its worldwide studios, revealing that PS4 title Days Gone has been delayed. In a post on the PlayStation blog, Asad Quizilbash, Vice President of Marketing at Sony Interactive Entertainment America, Confirmed the open world survival shooter will now launch on April 26th, 2019. It was previous it was previously scheduled for February 22nd, 2019. 
In its statement, Sony said this was done in order to get out of a busy period and give developer Sony Bend some time to improve the title. We recently decided to move the release of Days Gone from the crowded February timeframe to April 26, 2019, says Quizzle Bash. While the studio is eager to see Days Gone in the hands of fans, Ben Studio, ben studio will take the opportunity to further polish Days Gone. In Days Gone, players take control of a biker called Deacon St. John, who also happens to be a bounty hunter making his way through ravaged through ravaged through the ravaged world on his bike. Somebody needs to proofread these articles. Days Gone's brand of hellish apocalypse is made up fast of fast moving zombie like creatures called freakers that based on the trailers often seem to run around in hordes. We played Days Gone at E3 2018 and according to Oscar Deus, it appeared to be quite basic. The meta game of character progression, as well as most meaningful narrative content and the entirety of the open world was not accessible in the version I played, he said. My hope is that this was a bad demo rather than a bad game. However, on present viewing, Days Gone will need to improve a significant amount to become more than relatively the more than the relatively basic zombie shooter it currently appears to be. And we'll leave that at that. Uh, we've got some news regarding uh, Xbox Game Pass coming to PC. Interestingly, so let's have a look at that if this does still load. Ah, while that's loading, Super Meat Boy is getting a new. Getting a new multiplayer race mode this week. Interesting. Super Meat Boy is getting a new multiplayer race mode later this week, allowing players to, you guessed it, race through the game's levels. Previously exclusive to the Nintendo Switch, the game has two sub modes. Normal, let normal lets players choose where they'll race and whether they want to include dark levels, while random, as the name suggests, fills up level at random. On the Nintendo Switch, at least, these races are split screen, local multiplayer only. In its announcement, Team Meat didn't say whether online multiplayer would be supported, but I'd highly guess it won't be. Whatever the case, the game is currently $1.49. On Steam, so if you're among the very few who don't own Super Meat Boy yet, now's a good time to buy it. Or you could wait for Super Meat Boy Forever, which is an auto runner take on the hardest nails platforming formula, and it looks pretty good. There we go, and we are back online. Here we go. Give that simple reset, and it works. Right, so uh, Microsoft planning on bringing Xbox Game Pass to PC. Interesting. Let's have a look. What are we seeing here? So, what do we have? In a quarterly earnings report on Wednesday, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella mentioned plans to bring the subscription service Xbox Game Pass to the PC. For $10 a month, Xbox console players get access to a library of more than 200 new and old games. Are you sure it's only, are you sure it's not just over 100? Does like the selection includes some of my big, some big Microsoft exclusives like Forza Horizon 4 and Sea of Thieves, as well as indie and third-party games like Rocket League and Fallout 4. As long as you pay for the subscription, you can play them as you can play as many of them as you want. Bringing Game Pass to even the PC is going to be a big element of increasing the strength of our gaming community, Nadella said in the earnings conference call. The existing Game Pass subscribers can, in a way, already play those games in their PCs. Play Anywhere games that are part of the Game Pass can be played on Windows 10 as well. If you played, if you brave the Microsoft Store to get them, but that's a limited, but that's a limited section of the total Game Pass library, largely made up of micro, largely made up of Microsoft's own games. Nadella didn't detail what bringing Game Pass to PC will entail, but my pie in the sky hope is that it includes PC emulation for Game Pass's backwards compatible selection, like Ninja Gaiden Black. That I can get behind. It'll be interesting to see how they get the entire Game Pass library onto Windows 10. So, let's have a look at what's been going on with Red Dead Redemption news. 
Red Dead Redemption 2 PS4 install time revealed, and it will take a really long time. Here we go. It's known by now that Red Dead Redemption 2 is a massive game. It's so massive, it'll come in two discs, even. So wait, Red Dead Redemption, is, Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to come in two discs? While we already know how big the game is in terms of date, in terms of date size, we also know how long it'll take to install the game data to your PS4. YouTuber GeekAloud seemingly has an early copy of the game and live streams the entire installation process. And yeah, it will take a while. It's going to take a long while. So long, in fact, you can watch an entire movie before it's done. Nope. I'm not kidding. It's close to an hour and 20 minutes plus just to install the game via the data and play discs that, that it comes in. Note that the install time isn't the same as the download size, so it shouldn't matter how fast the internet speed is. Aside from, Red Dead, aside from the Red Dead 2 install time, there's also a day one patch that's around three gigabytes that players will need to download as well. Well, at least now you know. So maybe prep a movie to watch and go out or go out for a bit or something before you get lost in Red Dead Redemption 2's world. In other Red Dead Redemption 2 news, Rockstar Games announced that a companion app will come on release day that will act as the game's map and the display key info about the game. You can also check out the game map leak in the full right in the full if you want to see how big the land area is. Well, let's have a look. Let's have a... Holy moly. That's a pretty big map. There we go, that's what we want. The Red Dead Redemption 2 gets a free tie-in app to help you on your way as well. Good to know. Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of, if not the most anticipated game of 2018, and it finally lands it finally landed yesterday. But while the sheer scale of the giant open world western game may be daunting to some, it looks like we'll be getting a bit of help from the developers along the way. A blog post by Rockstar Games announced the official Red Dead Redemption 2 companion app for iOS and Android devices which will connect directly to your PS4 or Xbox One console while running the game. The free app will show up in the free app will show up in the in-game map and allow you to set waypoints or mark areas of interest with a tap on your screen, aiding your exploration and discovery through the expansive world of Red Dead Redemption 2. You can also use the smartphone or tablet app to read your in-game journal display characters, stats, and information in real time. You can remove the game's HUD from the TV entirely for a more cinematic feel. The announcement comes in the midst of increased scrutiny of Rockstar's working practices after reports of 100-hour working weeks for, for members of staff at peak periods of Red Dead Redemption 2's development. Companion app is likely to prove a boon to gamers wanting a more immersive experience with Red Dead Redemption 2, 
seeing it as it can separate the more technical stats and navigation features of the game from the visual gameplay, though we doubt you'll miss it if you decide to go without. Now that, did, that is a bit of a, that is a bit controversial when it comes to, uh, anyway. Um, so, there's permadeath in the game as well in regards to... regards to in regards to um we'll say the permadeath is one of the uh, me uh mechanics when it comes to red dead redemption 2 here we go now what does the permadeath involve let's go this is on games radar when we went hands-on with red dead redemption 2 one of the things that made the world feel so real more than just the usual pretty set dressing for a story, was the wildlife that skittered and skulled, skulked in every corner. We wanted to know what part this part of uh, what part of this world. Right, so long story short is the fact that you've got horse permadeath. Let's go back and get a shorter article on it. There we go. Red Dead Redemption 2 horses will stay permanently dead. So yeah, you've got permadeath. Here we go. Uh, this was um, this article was written on October twenty first, uh, nearly a week ago. Uh, Rockstar has re Rockstar has re uh, revealed a few more details on the upcome on the title, which will introduce a permadeath mechanic on the game's horses. In previous trailers, gameplay footage, and hands on demos that will reveal. In the, in the past, it is clear that Rockstar Games wanted the horses in Red Dead Redemption 2 to play a more significant part in the game. Rather than just a cool way to travel, the studio confirmed that players will be given the opportunity to bond with their noble steeds, which will serve as a beloved companion. Of course, the more loyal the horse is to the player, the better it will perform and behave in combat. Moreover, it seems that players must also ensure the safety and well-being of their horses, as Phil Hooker, the director of technology at Rockstar Games, confirmed that once the horses die in-game, they will remain dead forever. It's your closest and trust it's your closest trusted companion, and you are nearly always together. To cement the strength of the bond, we had to make it vulnerable so you respect and cared for it as you play. So it feels personal and real, Hooker revealed during the interview. Given that Rockstar is focused on making horses a companion rather than just a means of transportation, it is understandable that the studio had to introduce a permadeath mechanic in Red Dead Redemption 2, knowing that the horses won't respawn once they're killed is a strong motivation for players to pay extra attention to it. Even if the player doesn't get attached to the horse, replacing it once it's killed would mean the player has to start from the beginning to make the new horse loyal to them and ensure they behave well and perform in combat. Okay. Very interesting. Now uh, that I'm definitely going to try out. I'm definitely going to try out that uh, game when it comes out. And talking of Red Dead Redemption Two. We've got fifty one achievements to get through. Fifty one achievements, 
resulting in 1,000 Redeemer score, which means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. <laughs> yep. It is time for Red Dead Redemption 2 achievements. So, uh, the secret achievements, uh, they're just basically completing various. Uh, Story based things there. Uh, Cowboy Builder, complete a new Jerusalem. It's art to find permanent home for the sta squirrel statue. Just a scratch, complete. Enter pursued by a memory. Third time lucky, complete. Goodbye, good friend. Back in the mud, complete chapter one. End the summer, complete the epilogue. No traitors, complete chapter five. Paying respects, find the graves of each of your former companions. Setting settled views, complete chapter three. To greener pastures, complete chapter two. Wash the shore, complete chapter four and redemption complete red dead redemption three so so that's uh 10 10 10 10 20 20 20 20 20 30 right see so th those are the secret achievements 10 10 10, 10. four tens seven twenties and a 30. and now for the rest of the achievements here we go Breakout, Red Dead Online, complete the intro. Posse up, Red Dead Online, form a persistent posse. Artificial intelligence, discover the fate of Marco Dragic. Butchered, Red Dead Online, sell 20 items to the butcher. Errand boy, deliver five camp companion item requests. Eventful, Red Dead Online. Play five, ri play five free roam events. Extreme personality, reach maximum or minimum honor level. Getting started, Red Dead Online, reach rank 10. Give the pro, donate 250 to the gang tithing box. Grin and bear it, survive 18 bear attacks and kill the bear each time in story mode. Red Dead on Gun for Hire, Red Dead Online. Accept 10 free roam missions from the characters around the world. Hobby Horse, complete all mini games. Locked and loaded, upgrade each available component for a single sidearm or long arm weapon. Master Craftsman, Red Dead Online, craft 20 items excluding ammo. Non-regulation, Red Dead Online complete 20, cr craft 25 pieces of ammunition. Pony up, spend $5,000 across all shops. Self-sufficient, craft 30 unique items in story mode. Series major, Red Dead Online take part in a series. Strength in numbers, Red Dead Online complete a free roam mission as part of a posse with at least two members. Take from the rich, rob or, lo rob or loot $250. Trusty Steve, reach maximum bonding level with a horse. All's fair. Red Dead Online, successfully counter arrivals posse, free room, arrival posse, free room mission. Bountiful, Sur survive three days holding a bounty of $250 in all states. Breaking and entering, recover the stash from four homesteads. Buckle up, Red Dead Online, achieve five gold belt buckles from awards. Collector's item, complete one of the collectible strands. Friends with benefits, complete a companion activity in each camp. Home comforts, Red Dead Online, Purchase five camp improvements. Horses for courses, Red Dead Online. Co currently own five horses. It was this big! Catch a fish weighing at least 16 pounds or 7.3 kilos. Picked to perfection, Red Dead Online. Picked 25 herbs. Zoologist. Study every animal across all states in story mode. Lending a hand. Complete all optional honor story missions. Skin deep. Skin every species of animal in story mode. The real deal, Red Dead Online. Achieve MVP three times in a round with at least four players. Western Stranger, complete 10 Stranger mission strands. Gold Rush, earn 70 gold medals in story missions. Best in the West, attain 100% completion. And Notorious, Red Dead Online, reach rank 50. And you can check out the... Uh you can check out how much those are worth, be it through your trophy, be it through your trophy list or achievement list, as I've just gone through on it. And uh, talking of trophies, we have some new trophies for Spider-Man. So, points and trophies section number two. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. So here we go. Uh, 
the first two trophies um, is basically for New Game Plus mode. One more time, which is a bronze trophy, complete a New Game Plus playthrough. Power and Responsibility, complete a playthrough on Ultimate Difficulty. That is a silver trophy. And you've got the Heist, trophy, the heist uh, DLC as well. So here we go. Bronze. Disorganized crime. Complete all crimes in a district. The long con. Complete like a fiddle mission. Bye, Felicia. Complete follow the money mission. Here, kitty kitty. Complete black cat chase. The cat came back. Complete the Maria mission. And silver achievement. Get spectacular on or better in all screwball challenges. And gold seduced by the city. 100% complete the city that never sleeps, the heist. Um, the bronze trophy for completing the New Game Plus mode playthrough is one more time, and power and responsibility is the trophy name for completing a playthrough on Ultimate Difficulty, which I'm actually going through right now. In the meantime, that's it for this week's edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Hope you enjoyed. We saw if you did, as always, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be advertised and following the channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the live Facebook and notification squad. And if there's anything I do on this channel. Uh, I've got a uh, Go by Thursdays on the left. Uh, podcast playlist on the right. Apprentice later today. And then Tom and Jerry Sims as well. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. Stay faithful as always.